Hi everyone, welcome to an app sheet tutorial. Today we are going to build an app for travel approval. You can extend the same idea to other types of approval workflows. In this app, a requester shall be able to place a travel request which will be approved or rejected by a director. Contingent on the approval from a director, the VP will be able to approve or reject the request. The requester will get notifications with status updates. Let's now check the source file. The main table here in my source file is the request table. This contains all the request information. Make sure to log the requester's email address, purpose for travel, cost center or department name, travel expenses, or any other information that might be relevant for your organization. The approvers can be computed either from department name or it could be a user input. I'll show these cases shortly. Next, I have one table each for director and VP approvals. These are summary tables uh, based on the requests that are routed to the approvers. All the other tables here, namely cost center, anticipated benefit, permissions, and approval relationship, offer standard values for drop downs and references for fields within the request table. This is a blank app, and I'm going to add the request table, the table on cost center, anticipated benefit, permissions, and approval relationship. For the request table, I'm setting initial value for the request ID to be a unique ID and this is my table key. Every time a new request is created, I want to record the timestamp, setting initial value to now function and making this non-editable. Request name is my label. I'll log the requester's email address. The cost center is going to be a re reference enum to the cost center table. The same for anticipated benefit. I'm adding two enum options for travel type, domestic and international. The status shall be new when request is created. So I'm adding a default value there. The director value will be an enum reference. So creating that here. The VP field can be computed based on who the red director reports to. Uh, this is again uh, on the approval relationship table. So I'm going to run a lookup to do this. You can do this even for the director's email address. But you can also give the user the option to enter director email address and the VP's email address. Lastly, you can feel free to run a directory integration if you use Google Workspace and directory. I see a warning here on anticipated benefits field. So I'm going to add a sample option uh, for the dropdown. I'm also changing the key and label for all the other tables. This is because I would like to see the label being populated in my source file for the request table instead of the key value. Next, we are going to create our first view. AppSheet automatically created a view for the request table. I'm changing this to a table view and making tweaks uh, to this view, uh, especially the column order, the group buys, and a few other things. I noticed the labels for cost center anticipated benefit have an exclamation mark. Looking at the data, it's because I'm using the ID column instead of the value, which in our case represents both the key and label. That's fixed and now I'm going to make a few aesthetic changes to the view. I 
I made a few more edits on the column order. In the rest of this tutorial, I'll not be talking about minor changes in depth. Next, I want to route the request to the director. We'll do two steps here. Step number one, we'll add the director approval table. Step number two, we'll create a bunch of actions and automations along with buttons to complete this step. Now that we added the director table, I'm going to add an action to change status as router to director for every request. I will also show this action on my request detail page so the requester can click on this button and route it to director whenever needed. Additionally, I would like this button to show up only when the status of the request is new and not when it has been routed to the director previously. And I want the requester to be able to route it and not anybody else. So I'm adding a few conditions and I'm checking with the data if my conditions are working. And they seem to work fine. Next, we'll add automation to run a couple of steps when request status changes to router to director. Let me share the workflow first, and then I'll share a clip of me creating this on AppSheet. As soon as the event occurs, the event being status change on the request table, AppSheet needs to fire two processes. The first process is to add a record in the director approvals table. The values of the columns of this record are going to be the values from the request table. For example, the request name is going to remain the same as on the request table. And the second process is going to be an email notification to the requester on the status change. Let's now route a request and check if our processes are getting fired. I'm going to route this request. You could also use the button and that should trigger the same response. The status is updated. The director approval table is populated. And I've also received an email notification. I don't want the timestamp to be updated on the director approvals table when a record is created. So I'm going to remove the initial value setting. I'm going to make it blank. I'm also going to create a view for the director approvals table. All right, I've added two actions, one for director's approval and one for their rejection. I'm setting the approval column to the approval status and making some aesthetic choices here. Finally, I want to show this action only when a request is pending for review. 
So if it's already approved, I should not show the action button. Also, only a director assigned to this request should be able to approve this. I did precisely the same for the rejection action too. And I added the action buttons to the director approval page. Next, we are going to run a bunch of automation for routing the request to the VP. Please add the VP approval table before doing these steps. Alright, so here's the workflow. As soon as the director approves or rejects a request, a number of steps need to be triggered. Step number one, update the approval or rejection timestamp on the director approvals table. Step number two, we need to check if the request has been approved or was it rejected so we branch on this condition step number three if approved you can send a custom email to the requester saying that their request has been approved and you can create a record on the vp table this step is how we created the record for the director approvals table previously lastly you need to update your request table the status for the request needs to say that it has been routed to VP. This is a reference action and I'll explain this shortly. If the director rejects the request, however, you need to trigger a rejection email to the requester and change the status on the request table. For the reference action, you need to create an action first. For the request table, I've created an action to update status as routed to VP. We can then call this action here by referencing the request table and referencing only those rows from the request table where the request ID matches for this triggered request. In other words, let's say request ID 112 is being routed to the VP. Then I need to change the status only for those requests where the request ID is 112 in my original request table. We need to do a similar step for the rejection part. All right, now I'm going to add a view for the VP approval table. Let's test the director approval flow. I'm going to approve this request that we have here Looks like the record is created for the VP's approval and I've also received an automated email on the update. Next, we create actions for the VP. These are going to be similar to those we created for the director. So I have added two actions here. One is for approval and the other one is for rejection. Let's go and then add these to our VP approval views. Once the VP approves or rejects a request, a series of steps should get fired by AppSheet. Let's check these out. These are very similar to what we did for the director approval. So step one is to check if there is an update to the VP approval field. Note that the initial value for VP approval is set to pending for review and changes to that fires a series of actions. Step two is to update the VP approval timestamp. Step three, we branch on whether the request is approved or rejected. This is the same as what we did for director approvals table. We have to run reference actions to update the request table of the status of VP approval on both sides of the branch. So if it's approved or rejected, we still have to update the request table. Lastly, we have to send a notification to the requester about the status change. In this case, I have a common email template for both branches, but you can choose to do this differently. Please be cautious about creating these process steps. You may have to look up values from the request table for 
let's say feels like request or email so do that cautiously and do check out the template as you make changes let's do a quick check on the functionality once i press the approve button i see all the changes reflecting on my all requests page all right Next, I made a few aesthetic changes to the director and VP views. You don't see the approval buttons for all requests here because these are contingent on whether something is pending for approval and if you have the permissions to take certain actions. I added the comments and approval fields as quick edit fields. Also added an editable if condition on approval such that a request status can be edited only when it's pending for approval and not when it's already approved or rejected. I added group by conditions for the primary views. I notice missing valid if conditions for enum fields and I added those, uh, especially for cost center and anticipated benefit. And then the value routed to VP for request status was missing in one of the enum fields. So I added that. After fixing those, I added a view request button or action that helps one view requests from any of these uh, director or VP approval pages. Lastly, I made some branding changes. Apart from the features that we added so far, you could add additional features to the app. Some of these could be a dashboard summarizing all the requests. You could even add dynamic emails for approvers so that they can approve or reject a request right from the convenience of their email. You could even add security filters to make certain views hidden from non-approvers. You could add onboarding pages that provide instructions on how to use the app. Lastly, we have the chat apps public preview going on right now, so feel free to explore chat apps in the context of this app. I hope the tutorial was helpful. You can find links to the template and the source file in the description and if you have any questions feel free to post it as comments here or in the community. Thank you.